Hey, what's up everyone? Nomadic Gaijin here. Today we're going to be checking out Matsushiro Underground Imperial Headquarters. It's going to be awesome. Let's go. In beautiful Nagano Prefecture, there's a place tucked away that in World War II was being built as an underground headquarters for military, royalty, and communications. Parts of it are open to the public. Come check out a piece of history as we explore Matsushiro Imperial Underground Headquarters. Okay, I got... Look what I found. I got my hat. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. I got those two flashlights. My hat, my phone, and my freaking wallet. All right, that's it. That's all you need. We are getting, getting out of while. here. And there's my buddy. Lenny. He's gonna be so pissed off that I'm leaving. Yeah. By car, it's a three hour drive for us. Deep into Nagano Prefecture, a site that was well off the beaten path that no one would ever find if they didn't know where it was. It's like, you know a lot of those highway parts that are just blocked on the sides? You don't see anything, it's kind of boring. I like this one because you go over this hill over here yeah, and you can sort see- sort of like the Midwest. Yeah, you can see tons of like cities, little pocket villages. You're on the, the Hokuriku Highway for, I don't know. We're on the Yakiniku minutes. Highway? Yakiniku Highway. It sounds like that. Hokuriku, man. Hokuriku. One of my favorite areas Hoku in Japan. <laughs> yes. What? <laughs> We're getting off the Nagano, I see. It's like the Nagano exit. Nagano's a massive prefecture. Every time I hear the word Nagano, it reminds me of eggnog. Oh my god, I'll never unhear that. Now. Eggnogano. Eggnogano. <laughs> Eggnogano? Oh, what? Dude. Eggnogano. We're supposed to park here, okay. but it's not open yet, so I'm not sure how. Check on this park and go in and say, duh, what do I do? Parking car head first, it says. Yeah. I'm gonna make you leave the key. <laughs> no, no. The guy on this poster at the museum looks suspiciously like my guest for today. This was to be Japan's final stand if it came down to it. If the mainland was invaded, this was the perfect place to relocate the people capable of running the country. The area was chosen as the best location for an underground base, containing a wide, flat area surrounded by mountains with an airstrip close by. The solid material in the mountains was good for both excavation and sturdy enough to withstand bombing runs. Less than a year into the project and only 75% complete, it was abandoned when Japan surrendered. A portion of the underground is open to the public for free to explore and marvel at a historic relic of a place that would have certainly been amazing. got here at 9 in the morning after I left home around what 4 30 a.m. <laughs> to get you we're going down this way and we are in literally just like the middle of nowhere here that's pretty cool look at that how you doing Todd you awake a little hot a little hot really I'm I'm freezing I got two heat packs on under here and heat tech and layers well, the car was warm. Yeah, I'm guessing that's part Start of the problem. Freezing in five minutes. Yeah. Let's go get some ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> a quiet town. This was a really nice place. The air was clean. There was no one around. There was snow on the sides. It's about an eight minute walk from the parking area to the actual location. Other than this sign right here, there's not much of a marker. Alright, so we're at the entrance. We appear to be the first people here. And this is the helmet area. So you have to get a helmet from the locker uh, because you gotta be safe. So I've gotta ditch the old white hat here and we're gonna go into a piece of uh, World War II history, which is gonna be very exciting. 
As you approach the entryway, there's a few signs outside that have a bit of the story, showing you where you can go and can't go, and a line map that just gives you a basic route. Now, it's a bit worn off on here, but you go through this path, and then at the end you turn around and come back. But along the way you can see through all the tunnels, and it's a really nice trip. Okay, <laughs> we've got our hard hats on. Oh yeah, we are ready to go. So we're gonna walk in the entrance. I think we are the only people here. The sign at the entrance to the cave asks you to wear a helmet, warns you to watch your head, and also the less obvious but equally important, no smoking in the shelter. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, the, the lighting here is really bright, so I, I like don't even really need this that we wanted like look at. There's also some parts I think that aren't as well lit. And it's actually nice and warm down here. Ooh, no wonder I'm wearing a helmet, I just hit my head. <laughs> so you can see we gotta wear these hard hats because there are low ceilings at some points. I actually already hit my head once or twice. In the 80s, when Nagano was hosting the Winter Olympics, they kept this site off all the tourist maps. And part of the reason is because there were a lot of negative stories involved with the creation and development of this location. But in the end, uh, they've opened it to the public and I'm really happy that I can access it and that anybody can come see a nice piece of history. These things that hold up the, the kind of weak areas kind of look like Tori. We're only scratching the surface. This place is, is it's huge underground. I think it was something like 5,000 square meters. So Todd, you're standing in history. What do you think, man? I don't know. I don't feel historical. <laughs> so if you don't like the idea of walking in tunnels underground in an earthquake prone country, this might not be the right place for you. <laughs> See, I saw this telephone over here and I thought, oh man. This is where you call for back if you can't make it back. <laughs> so this is what it looks like if you don't have a light. You can't really see very well into the, like the, I mean, it's just, it's just caves, but it's kind of cool. It's a piece of the history. So if you ever come to this place, definitely bring some kind of light. What Todd's got going on right now is He's got an area light that lights up like in a very broad lighting and he's got a focus light in his hand. Yeah, this is a Meteor Pro bicycle light. It's 450 lumens. Today we're using it to pierce through the darkness. So. Nice. Yeah. I've been conditioned from video games to expect some monsters to appear anywhere here. You see those two little red eyes in there? <laughs> shut up, man, shut up. Todd is trying to scare me right now. Oh, oh my god! It's gonna get me! <laughs> I like that. See those two red eyes out there? No, I just wanted to be like those Japanese comedians that go around and act like buffoons when they're wherever they are. Look how far this one goes down. I don't think I can even get light all the way down. Todd, can you bring that bike light over here? Wow, that thing does pierce, doesn't it? Okay, so the tunnel kind of widens out here. We've seen how many branch offs so far? At least five, six, maybe more. And in each instance, the branch goes in both directions. So each of those have branches as well. I can't imagine how complex it is. Well, it's really dusty here. See the dust from the light. Yeah, I'm bundled up for winter and I'm starting to sweat and overheat. I forgot that when you're in a cave like this, uh, depending on the rock and, and the depth of the cave, it just stays a nominal temperature, regardless of what's going on outside. And right now it feels like central heating. It's, it's kind of nice and warm. And the humidity is really high. We're sort of like in a cloud right now. If you look down the hallway here, this is kind of a bit of a haze. What is all this? Is that, are those logs? Oh, fun. Uh, another reason to have uh, masks on right now. We don't know what we're breathing up in here.
That's, it's pretty much the only wood you see in here, right? That's one of the original like drill holes. Wow. So once you've been in here for a while, I don't notice the humidity or the dust at all anymore. It's starting to get colder because we're getting closer to the edge. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually really comfortable at the end. Yeah. It literally, you could just be sitting there in a, in a shirt and pants and you'd be fine. The wood here is soaking wet. It's completely different than the wood we saw earlier. This is closer to the entrance. I guess this is this area might have been a problem area. <laughs> you mean the area they opened to the public? <laughs> no, that's why they put this bridge so that the little pieces don't fall. Yeah. And so they put that up there for some reason to block it or something. The helmet and these these overhangs here and everything. This must be due to there must have been some issues at some point. It's nice and bright here. I don't need this anymore. <laughs> We're getting uh, the light from Maybe the entrance. I'll just leave it here. Okay. Oh, um, <laughs> See you later. <laughs> I just whacked my head. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, you wear a helmet. Oh, 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 God. It's only the entrance that is kind of dangerous. The rest of it's pretty high ceiling. Yeah, and that's where I, I hit my head too. It was right in the entrance. Whoa. Yeah, right. Ooh. and I hit my head right at the end. <laughs> Thank God for this helmet. Watch that last step. Yeah, yeah, that's, I hit it on a bar though. When you're finished, uh, if you didn't understand what the guy said, as he only speaks Japanese, you're meant to take off the helmet and leave it on the bench. Look at how clean the water yeah, here is. Just, just around. snow melt off. You can see the snow. Wow. I've seen torty gates like this, but never right in between two houses. Like it's right in their front yard. So at one of the <laughs> we're at one of the the shrines, the different things that they built around this site. Uh, some of it was before, some of it was after. Um, there was an orphanage here for a short time, uh, like partially. I, I don't remember. I don't know exactly where. I just read about that, and they wanted to expand it, but that never happened because plans fall through here all the time. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on this journey. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.